My name is One Eyed Bear and Mary Sally Flap. Today, we're going to be covering Solid. Solid is a three dimensional enclosed surface. How do we know when a surface is enclosed? Well, we know that if, for example, we take our surface, so here is my three dimensional shape right now, and we put a fly in there. So can the fly get out over here? No, because it's in a fully enclosed surface. It can't move out because it's blocked. However, what if we had a unfully enclosed surface? So like, for example, a surface like this one. Well, uh, let me just redraw that. Well, now the fly, if we put it here, it can just fly away. So, we don't want the fly to fly away. Otherwise, it's not a solid. So, this is a solid, that's not a solid. There are many different types of solids. So, let's get to them in this video. First of all, you need to know some things about solids. So, first of all, faces, second of all, edges. Now, you may think of faces like this. You may think of a face like that. However, that's not the type of face we're talking about. So, you can destroy that man. Uh, I'm not saying the other word for it because uh, YouTube. This is a face. So, here is our face. In fact, solids have more than one face. A face is one of the surfaces bounding or, uh, this uh, solid. So, you see these shaded things? They are faces. So, you can also kind of describe them like the polygons that come together to make a three-dimensional shape. So, like, if we had a cube or something resembling a cube over here, then we can take this away and it's a face. All right. So now, what is an edge? Well, there are, uh, you can define it two ways. First of all, you can say that it's one of the sides of the two-dimensional faces, or you can say that it is where two faces touch. So if we had a little tetrahedron, you I'm sure you'll learn what that is soon enough. So if we had a little tetrahedron, then there's an edge over here because two of the faces are uh, touching. So now, we know what solids, faces, and edges are. So let's get to the types of solids. First of all, probably the most important and most uh, widely used, prisms. So a prism is basically a three-dimensional object. So here we have a triangular prism. And uh, let's just do this to outline these sides. And as you can see, this uh, triangular prism has two sides that are remarkably triangular. However, that's not just it. There's also a rectangular prism, a hexagonal prism, sep a heptagonal prism, a pentagonal prism, a chiliagonal prism, uh, any prism. So, now, let's try triangular. Sorry, uh, I forgot the word for a little bit. This triangular prism, as you can see, it has two triangular faces. We call these bases. Man, I'm a poet. So, uh, sus, sus, sus. Uh, you're not mocking my poetry. I'm the best poet ever. Better than Shakespeare. So, uh, yeah, I'm not better than Shakespeare. I'm sorry, guys, I lied to you again. So, anyway, these are called bases. 
Now you might be wondering, what are the other sides called? Faces? Well, they are called faces, but they have a special name. The faces that are not bases are lateral. Uh, oh man, another rhyme. It's totally not the one I just used before. I'm a great poet. So, anyway, the faces that are not bases are lateral faces. So, there are also lateral edges, which are just one of the so uh, one of the edges of a lateral face. So now, let's get to our, the bulk of prisms. So, prisms, the volume of prisms can always be found by B8. Don't get that confused with a rectangle. Prism is not a rectangle, it's three dimensional. B simply means the area of the base. So, of one of the bases. So, now, I'm I'm constantly switching holding positions for this really heavy mic. And, now, if we have uh, these prisms, there are actually two types of prisms. First of all, there are right prisms, like the ones we just covered. So, here is a right prism. I'm just going to dotted line everything that's not in view. And there's a wrong prism. I'm just kidding. There's no wrong prism. Uh, somebody will invent it in the future. But right now we have a right prism. So I'm going to draw two right prisms. And, of course, we have two oblique prisms. So, uh, I guess now I can either get a question right or oblique. So, if we have an oblique prism, then the prism will look like this. As you can see, it's definitely not your normal prism. It's like slanted. It's pushed. So, we can also do that for the square. You might see an oblique prism when you're uh, using one of those pink pearl erasers, but you all probably won't see oblique prisms anywhere else. So, here are right prisms versus oblique prisms. And of course, a prism it's, uh, for a prism, the bases must actually be polygons. So I'm sorry, but a cylinder is not a circle prism. D uh, don't worry, I was surprised too. Is the characteristics of a right and an oblique uh, and oblique prisms? Well, for right prisms, the, all lateral faces are rectangular, and all lateral faces or lateral edges rather, are perpendicular to one of the two bases. Mm. However, this is not the case with oblique prisms <coughs> because the lateral faces are not <coughs> uh, uh, perpendicular. In fact, uh, all lateral faces are parallelograms. Okay. So now this is where we are at right now. However, we still have a lot of things to go that do not include prisms. First of all, let's talk about that sadly non circle prism, the cylinder. So our cylinder over here probably needs to be bigger. So our cylinder has a radius r, 
And obviously it also has its height. It's oh, and I forgot to mention, the height of a prism is actually just the distance between the two bases. So yes, this is the height of this prism. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. So anyway, the height of course is the distance between the two uh, bases, uh, they are bases of the cylinder. So these circular bases, since this is kind of like a circle prism, then we can also calculate its area or uh, its volume with B8. How, uh, however, most of the time you will see a circular, circular <coughs> cylinders. So for that, we can uh, make the base pi r squared because that's the area of a circle. So we have pi r squared eight. So that's the volume and everything about the cylinder. Now, what about uh, a cone? Well, you've probably seen a cone before if you're at a birthday party. If you don't go to birthday parties, then I'm sure you've seen it on ice cream cones. I know. Is there a... Is there a Mark and Anthony concert going on near me? I don't know. So anyway, I'm probably going to be copyrighted for this video because of the music somebody else who crossed in a street is playing. But anyway, here are our cones. And these cones meet up at a single apex. And this apex... Uh, it also has a radius. I need to get this finished quickly so that I don't get uh, demonetized and copyrighted for the music playing across the street. And there's also uh, the uh, there's also the pyramid. So this pyramid uh, can be uh, the base of a pyramid can be any shape, uh, any polygon. And uh, however, all of the lateral faces of uh, of uh, oh god. Uh, all of the lateral faces of a pyramid are triangular. So, also, the, there is obviously the height of the cone, and there is the height of the pyramid as well. However, the thing is, the cone also has a slanted height, which is height measured along the lateral surface. So, now, let's <coughs> find the... What is it? Oh yeah. So the volume for both of them is one third B8. Because a cone can also be an oval, the base of a cone can also be an oval, then, but mostly it's a circle, then I'm going to say one third pi r squared for this one, V is just B, uh, B8 for this one, because the base can be anything. So now, finally, we have to cover the sphere. The sphere. How do I pronounce it? Sphere. 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 I don't know. So here's our sphere. And the singular surface that is in, uh, covering it entirely, that's what makes it unique. Uh, the single surface that is covering it entirely uh, is made up of all the points that are equidistant from point uh, C, which we'll call that the center, that's what we'll call the center. So they're equidistant from the center by a distance of R. And the area of a circle is simply four thirds, or the volume of the uh, sphere is four thirds pi R cubed. So thank you everybody for watching, and I don't have much time on my hands. Thank you everybody for watching.